So the first and one of the most common things that comes up is what catalog should I use? Uh, Iceberg has a wide variety of catalogs that you can select from. Uh, there are a lot of open source implementations. There are vendor implementations out there. And this has become kind of a challenging point for people as they're approaching the community because there's things that are intended for, you know, migrating from legacy systems. There are ones that are really adapted to Iceberg and really understanding the landscape and how all this fits together is, is quite hard. So with that, I think the first thing that you need to understand is like, well, what role does a catalog play within Iceberg? And I would say that it, it fulfills two main functions. The first of which is logical name resolution. So when you're working with SQL or you're working with uh, some sort of data frame, Spark, Trino, any of these engines, you're typically resolving a table by name. And that's partially because people aren't great about you know, remembering paths in S3 or HDFS. But that's actually how a lot of distributed processing started. It would be use this path location, uh, just remember what the pathing structure is or try and create one that's reasonable for a human to understand. But And there are still people who believe that you don't need a catalog, you can just point to files in a file system somewhere. However, that's really hard to scale up for anybody who's doing data engineering, data analytics. We, we're people, we think in terms of names. Unfortunately, like the naming system is... Uh, not fully agreed upon across different databases and technologies. Uh, typically, what we find now is they use three-part identifiers, one for the catalog, another level for the database, and the final level for table. And depending on which engine you use, they may call it different things. But this is actually starting to become pretty typical. And at the top level, we kind of have this catalog concept. So the catalog is really providing a way for the engines that are working with the data to take whatever human readable name and point it to whatever the iceberg metadata is that represents the current state of the table. Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, but you actually need this in order to understand like, well, how do we actually point to where the data is? And the second piece is complementary to that, which is providing an atomic update. So when you're going to actually change the state of the table, you need to move from one state to the next state in an atomic way. And Iceberg provides a lot of capability for representing the, the different changes between those things, the validations that need to happen, how things like schema evolution need to happen if you're changing metadata, uh, validations you need to do on the data in terms of providing isolation for transactional uh, movement of the data. But what this does is it, it really just changes from one set of metadata to another set of metadata in an atomic operation. There are a number of other capabilities and features and things like that that you know uh, go into a catalog. But if you look at the catalog interface within the Java implementation or the Python implementation, you'll see that it's mostly just you know listing names, uh, adding or creating and dropping namespaces and tables. But these are the primary things that the catalog actually does. That said, now you have lots of choices and implementations of that series of APIs and capabilities. And I call out six here. These six are ones that are actually included in open source Iceberg. Uh, some of them, like the REST catalog, you can have both open source as well as vendor implementations for. There are a number of them out there. Tabular provides you know, a vendor-specific version of the REST catalog implementation. But there are also many others. Uh, there are some that are more proprietary. Some of those live in the open source. Some of them are outside of the Iceberg project, but implement those same interfaces. So there's a huge range of these to select from. And it's kind of like, well, why do they all exist? And why would I choose one over the other? So I kind of put these, these six into different categories of native uh, for Iceberg, transitional, and unreliable. And we'll, we'll talk through each one of these and just get an understanding of like, why did I put them in those places? The first is native catalogs. The REST catalog in many ways is what I like to refer to as kind of the extension of what the Iceberg specification is. Iceberg spec defines how you lay out data in a object store or file system, uh, the guarantees around the schema, uh, behaviors, uh, evolution, transitions, uh, and history within that data set. All of these things are defined by the iceberg spec. The REST spec is complementary in, in that it defines how do you actually address, like from a catalog perspective, how do you address these tables? How do you update those tables? 
And it definitely has some capabilities that don't exist in most of the other catalogs because they're providing a very kind of remedial way of transitioning the table state, whereas the REST catalog actually provides some really nice like fine-grained update semantics. Uh, it can do things in the background that the other catalogs can't do because of that very coarse kind of switching between state, like commit deconfliction. And there are a number of other features that are going into the REST catalog, like uh, you know, server-side scan planning, fine-grain updates, pagination, things that you can't necessarily implement with the other catalog implementations. So from a project perspective, we really see that this is the direction that Iceberg is going. And uh, a lot of the features and effort that's going into building new capabilities is in the REST implementation. The JDBC catalog, is a native implementation for Iceberg that is just using a relational database. Uh, the, the value of the JWC catalog is it's easy to set up. It doesn't have a lot of the database dependencies that some of the other catalogs like the Hive catalog have, and it is tailored specifically toward Iceberg. The challenge with JDBC is there have sprung up a number of different implementations of the JDBC catalog. So the Java implementation has one, the Python implementation has one, Trino has a separate JDBC implementation. And what we're finding is that as we add new features, it's actually a little difficult to add them in a backward compatible way because there are different implementations that all need to operate against the database in a way that's consistent. So this has been a bit of a challenge, and we think that you know leaning into REST as the front end allows you to adapt a lot of those changes and behaviors and hide them from the engines and the consumers of the actual data. So these are, are definitely the, the leading uh, kind of implementations that you want to be looking toward. The next ones are the transitional catalogs. And I say transitional because a lot of times people have existing data in one of these systems. And what they're looking to do is they're looking to either convert it from Hive or get into something that is a more modern catalog implementation. Hive catalog was not built for Iceberg. Uh, it was actually convenient because a lot of the you know uh, industry that was starting to adopt Iceberg early on had a lot of Hive tables. But what we're really doing behind the scenes in Hive is using their table representation to point to iceberg metadata. And this causes a number of problems. One is that there is inaccurate schema representation. So the schema that's actually in the metadata file is different from the schema that, or could be different than from the schema that's actually tracked in Hive Metastore. And if you're only going through iceberg path, that may be fine. But if you're using other tools in your ecosystem that are trying to get, talk to that catalog, you can get into problems. This is true for glue as well, where glue is more of like an abstraction layer on top of a generic kind of table concept. An iceberg table in glue is nothing more than a property and a location that happens to be stored in property metadata in glue. Similarly, you have this conflicting source of truth problem where sometimes engines are trying to store information in glue for fast access, uh, but the actual source of truth is in the iceberg metadata. This presents a number of problems. And I think we've run into this where people would go to like the glue UI in the console and try and change the schema there, but then it wouldn't actually be reflected in the underlying iceberg metadata. And that's because it is really an abstraction. It isn't a native integration. The good thing is that a lot of systems are still are starting to lean in towards REST and that provides a really good migration path for anybody who is using this to kind of bridge the gap between their legacy Hive infrastructure or whatever they've built out in early stages within the cloud and a truly iceberg native warehousing solution. The last one is unreliable catalogs. And you know Hadoop catalog is something we often point to as, as uh, somewhat of a mistake. We introduced it early on because it was great for testing purposes and for people to play around with Iceberg in the, the early stages of Iceberg. Unfortunately, it is kind of the no catalog catalog. It's actually using a file system to represent what a catalog is. And that poses a number of problems. Uh, the difficulty there is it, it kind of works initially. And most of the early exploration, things feel kind of fine. And people say, well, you know, the problems that it causes with, you know, renaming or locking or the, you know, copy semantics uh, of different file system implementations, that doesn't matter to me. It won't be an issue. And then as they scale up, they start running into some of these real problems. 
there's a fair amount of people who are using this in production settings, and they're now running into real reliability problems. There is effort to go and fix some of the locking mechanics. I would really discourage anybody from doing anything with the Hadoop catalog other than you know, CI tests or, you know, just exploration as you're uh, dipping your toes into using Iceberg. The next one is DynamoDB catalog. And it, there's nothing wrong with DynamoDB per se. It's just that it was kind of an early implementation uh, prior to better glue implementation where there was actually native locking that we could use for the, the atomic operation to update metadata. Uh, it wasn't used widely. There were a few people using it. It didn't get great adoption. And because of that, it's kind of falling behind in features. It also hasn't been implemented in some of the other libraries that are springing up like Python and, and Rust. Um, and it's also a little bit more complicated to keep all of those behaviors consistent if you were going to go build native implementations in each one of those. So there are just better options. I, I would lean into one of the, the more modern options, or if you need a bridge, use one of the transitional catalogs. So the best practice here really is use the REST catalog if you can, get familiar with it. Uh, there are a number of different ways to kind of uh, play around with it. There are a number of vendor solutions, both tabular as well as some other vendors that have announced that they're going to be providing REST capabilities. And the, the main thing here is that Historically, we've really thought about catalogs as like, I have one catalog within my warehouse. It is my prod catalog. Maybe I have two. I have a prod and I have a test. But it, as you see what's happening in the cloud and the, the kind of global accessibility of data, it's very likely that what we're going to see moving forward is that you have multiple catalogs. You have different catalogs that represent either different clouds. You have different catalogs that represent different kinds of data sets, different teams and organizations within your organization. This actually provides a lot more flexibility uh, in terms of like dividing up and, uh, you know, positioning your, your organization than it does to try and shoehorn everything into just one solution. Almost all the engines at this point uh, support some idea of separate catalogs. Uh, Trino is a great example of being able to connect to lots of different systems and interact with them. But just having multiple catalogs, even with the same backing store like Iceberg, allows you to interoperate between all of those things. You can join across them. It really is more of like a logical separation and hides a lot of the details of like where it resides physically.